Um, my name is João Correa, and I'm here uh, to present a work uh, that was uh, based on a, a master thesis of a student um, that uh, I know it is on, on the audience, but um, nevertheless, uh, it is a work um, that was conducted during his uh, master's and was complemented um, via these authors that you see on the screen. Um, so basically, I, I'm, I will be doing the talk. And uh, without further ado, I will start to give some context uh, uh, to, the, to this problem. So the topic is about evolving image enhancement pipelines. And uh, this uh, um, topic uh, resulted from the, well, the need of a, a bigger problem uh, that is image enhancement on uh, real estate uh, marketing. Why this is a bigger problem? Well, uh, besides image enhancement alone, which is already a hot topic, uh, we have to deal with another um, another type of problem that is the context where we have uh, these images and for what they will be used for. And in real estate, it's very important to have, um, uh, well, images uh, that help you sell your real estate, right? So you can have already a, a good pool, uh, but if you take the picture wrong, probably uh, it won't sound that great. Uh, I, for instance, we can see here a, a kitchen that is also, well, we can argue that is poorly taken, the, the photograph. And so we can have some kind of mechanism to help out um, enhance this type of images and try to uh, alter the, 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 the aspects and enhance it to a point where it would help to, to, to sell to, to the audience that is uh, trying to acquire this real estate. Okay, So uh, of course, uh, well, don't expect any miracles uh, in some cases. Um, there are some pictures that can't be saved, uh, but uh, we can try to make it uh, uh, a little bit better than, uh, than it looks. Um, to do that, uh, our approach, um, in fact, uh, we thought about a bigger pipeline, a pipeline that was able to automatically enhance uh, images. Um, but in the context of this talk, we will focus on one part that um, uh, we called Evo Imagine. Um, uh, that is evolutionary image enhancer. That is an approach that is based on, on genetic programming that involves image filters uh, that are drawn from the state of the art of image enhancement uh, literature. Um, so the, the approach basically uses GP, where the function set is composed of image filters and as conditional operators uh, to apply those image filters. And the terminals are composed of ephemeral con constants or variables and the input image itself, okay? Um, so to, to talk a little bit about these filters, we started with a small set based on the study on, on, on image enhancement on, on classical approaches per se. Uh, so we have uh, something like uh, filters that uh, manage contrast, manage uh, histogram equalization, manage color, manage gamma accuracy. And so we resulted with these mathematical approaches that are able to pick up the image and try attempt to enhance it via these operations. Okay. Um, more details on, on the paper. Since we are talking a little bit more about the evolving the pipelines and, uh, uh, well, some of the unexpected results from this experiment, more details about this uh, are on the paper. And I will uh, carry on on explaining more about the operations and the experiments itself. But uh, I have to explain what is this conditional operators and why they are relevant. So we, we thought that beside applying the filters, we needed something, some mechanism that um, uh, enabled us to choose when to apply some kind of filter. And so the conditional operators here enter. Uh, but since we have an image, we must um, have some way of see if we uh, if it is worth it to apply the, the operator or not. And so these conditional uh, operators uh, needed to do some picture extraction on the image itself to, uh, to estimate some metrics 
and then apply, um, uh, well, and then serve as conditional to apply a certain filter. And this matrix evaluates some basic features of the images, the average noise, uh, the average contrast, saturation, brightness, all simple metrics to help us out uh, carry on with, uh, with these conditional operators. Just an example of an individual of such pipeline. So we have uh, 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 ETE, it stands for the if then else. And so we have the saturation uh, operator uh, on, the, on the left, uh, measuring if the input image is uh, above uh, 0 0.45 of saturation. Of course, this is normalized values for the pixel intensity of the image. Um, then we will apply one filter. If not, uh, we will apply another filter. So this way we can combine these uh, kind of elastic pipelines that can uh, move from one filter to the other, one condition to the other, and apply depending uh, on the condition of the input image itself, and not only by successively uh, applying uh, all the filters. Um, so for, for this uh, kind of problem, we have to uh, thought about an experimental setup that could help us um, harness the, 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 well, the result of the, the, the operations in this, um, in this context. And so we resorted once more, uh, based on a st state of the art about image quality assessment, we, uh, we gathered four metrics to help us uh, assess the our, our operations. Uh, so in this context, we have four uh, different metrics that evaluate the, the images. One is the photo I like, which is uh, a metric. Uh, well, it's some sort of a black box uh, to us because it's a service that evaluates the image in terms of aesthetics, but also in terms of how uh, valuable can be in the real estate uh, uh, scenario. We can, we have also um, BRISC, which is Blind Image Quality Quality Evaluator that is used in enhancement, uh, image enhancement context, which uses a bag of features to evaluate the image. And then we also used a classifier, a NEMA classifier, which is based on a convolutional network, trained uh, in different data sets. One more technical, that's why we have here the NEMA technical and the NEMA aesthetic, which is the one that uh, favors the aesthetic value of the images uh, instead uh, of being not so technical as the, the technical name. Um, so these four metrics will uh, uh, evaluate the resulting images and based on those on those evaluations we well we join some more conclusions on it and in this experiment. Uh, the data set that we used were real estate images. We left out some parts for, for testing. Uh, so in this context, since we are applying the, the evolutionary pipeline to every image, we are uh, assessing the metrics. Uh, but we left out uh, during the evolutionary process, we need some of these, um, uh, these images to evaluate individuals. But we left out some part for testing to uh, reassure the results at the end to ensure generalization of these evolved individuals. Um, we also added a baseline approach, uh, which is, uh, well, it was empirically studied with some of these uh, filters. Um, and so we applied to all the images, these filters from this uh, order. And based on those results, we evaluate also its uh, characteristics against our evolved solutions. The the GP uh, engine, uh, well, it, it uses the standard, uh, pretty standard setup. More details are on the paper, but we have uh, elitism, we have a population size of 80. We let it run for a couple of generations, and uh, we used also a one point crossover and sub three mutation to uh, uh, attempt variation on our individuals. Okay, so uh, and the, the results. First, um, we must uh, say that um, during evolution, the set on, on the training set is always uh, rotating. So the, the samples that are used to evaluate the, the individuals are always changing from generation to, to generation. And so individuals are uh, always put to the tests. And even so, we have elitism. We can see that uh, it has some peaks around 
uh, the, the several uh, generations uh, until it converges at the later stages of the generation. But nevertheless, we can see that the curve is smoothly uh, optimizing and uh, we actually drawn some uh, pipelines from the last generation, but we could and we did some tests also with uh, other peaks, uh, uh, pipe, well, pipelines on these peaks. I think you can see my mouse. So uh, we could draw also solutions from these, these peaks uh, and get a, a performance measure from those and see how, how it fare in, in this context and this experimental context. Um, but using the last, the best individual, uh, so, on the on the left we have the um, the the manual uh, effect so we have these four uh, graphs uh, represent the manual operator uh, so the the one that is fixed and so how it affects in, in terms of uh, uh, of metrics so on on the different metrics and in in blue we can see the original values of the images the distribution of the values for the image and in orange we can see the altered version so in the manual, we see uh, that, uh, well, we are optimizing uh, uh, towards the, the, the NEMA aesthetic. And so it's normal to see that uh, in this case, we have uh, some values uh, being improved on that matter. Um, but more so in the evolutionary process, uh, we can see that is clearly optimizing. Some of those, the other metrics are also uh, being optimized. Uh, so basically the, the metrics that are relevant to, to, to the marketing, the photo I like, and even risk are being up, uh, slightly optimized towards uh, greater values. And we can see also clearly the NEMA aesthetic response being optimized and the technical suffering a little bit uh, uh, on, on this uh, regard. Well, but it is expected when we see the visual results, it is expected that it, it, it occurs. So here we have uh, tabular values for, for these experiments. So in all um, except the NEMA technical, we have improvements against the, the original uh, uh, distribution of, of the images, the original values of uh, evaluation for this uh, set of uh, images. And uh, basically the only metric that we did not improve, even so the manual did not uh, improve. So just to clarify the negative means that it didn't uh, improve, it was, uh, um, an average decrease on uh, on the evaluation for these uh, metrics, and of course the positive ones that we are looking for is the improvement of these metrics regarding the original ones. So basically, you can say from this uh, table uh, to sum up, an evolutionary process has optimized at least three uh, metrics against the baseline. So basically, we did evolve uh, solutions that were able to enhance in a, on average. Uh, every image on the data set. Here are some experimental results to be a little bit more uh, uh, concrete. Uh, so we have the original image uh, on the left. These are really quite good images, but they uh, always need some, some a bit of touch every, every, every time. So the manual operation is represented here in the middle. And on the right, we have the evolutionary one uh, which uh, in this case, I think it smooths out uh, the, the lightning and the contrast of the images, especially in this uh, in this one. This is on the original one is a bit more darker. Here is a bit more bright, but the manual, I, th I think it's exaggerated a little bit. So uh, in this case, and based on the results, the visionary hold it the the best average improve in um, enhancing this image. Uh, some more res results with other type of images, not, not so good of an image here in the original one. If you use the manual, the static uh, pipeline, we end up, I think, in, from my perspective, uh, with a worse image and with evolutionary, it tends to make it a little bit more greener. Once again, in nascent contracts and it's in the color accuracy. And so uh, basically improving uh, besides the original ones. Same thing with, the, with this row. Uh, um, above and uh, well these were pipelines that were applied with um, with uh, relative success but 
some of these pipelines, even though they maximized the metric, gave up some expected unexpected results. I think I, I end up here uh, uh, talking about this part, um, which is even more relevant for the session because we basically were surprised with this result at, at this point because we are seeing the, the charts, everything says that is improving, is enhancing, and then we look up the images and we see this type of imagery. So clearly it is as exaggerated characteristics of the images to a point that is, uh, well, basically a picture, uh, almost a, a picture, no, an artwork, which was really interesting and, and well, it was kind of phenomena of serendipity, computational serendipity, because we were not expecting to find this at all. And we were seeing the results browsing in, and we encountered these pipelines that basically maximized the, the, the fitness and maximized the, all the metrics and gave, but gave these results that of course are not suitable uh, for real estate, but from artistic or subjective point of view, I think it, it yielded a very interesting result. Other uh, results on the same uh, um, uh, line of uh, uh, rationale, but a more soft uh, uh, application of these this non-realistic effects, because these are clearly uh, not real, real images, but they are enhanced versions that are not so, um, uh, so are, so intricate like the last ones, but also show some uh, non photorealistic effects. So with this uh, idea of non photorealistic rendering effects, we moved on to also analyze for the purpose of, of this work, some of these images and how we could explore it and how could we use it. Uh, uh, and well, delve a little bit on these results. And what, what we have done to do this? Well. Uh, nothing uh, at all. Basically, we had the same experience. We we just gathered pipelines from the the experiments that we already had, and so we just use them these pipelines in other contexts and see how it uh, pans out in, as an output. For instance, here with the same image applied to uh, the real estate uh, data set, we can see all these effects. So it, they are different pipelines and uh, um, the different pipelines hold the different output results. Uh, and we can uh, expect, well, we can use them in other contexts and see how it output it in another way. So for instance, with, okay, it's a bit, a bit laggy from this side. Uh, but here with the Eiffel Tower, with a picture of Eiffel Tower, we applied some of these uh, pipelines and saw the effect on them. Okay. I hope I'm not breaking down on, on the connection, but... Okay. Uh, apologies, I don't know if it is probably because of the transmission. But, well, I will move on to the next next slide to show another type of, of uh, image. Uh, this one is from uh, Portugal. It's a picture from Nazaré that uh, you can gather around the internet. And you, you can see all these uh, effects from different pipelines applied to, to the image. And with we also tried with photograph of uh, well uh, frontal faces and see the effect that it would produce. And uh, well, a poster with some um, CGI uh, generated posters. The effect we can see that it yields different um, different types of uh, imagery based on the, the, the pipelines. We can also try them paintings. Here, if I go with the uh, the pipelines applied, also Mondrian as an example, and well, I don't know if I will have time to do to do this, but we also have a demo page ready to 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 explore to to put these filters on the line. It's not open yet, but it. Uh, 
uh, it it uh, use it it can be used to to test uh, um, test out some of these filters on any image, and uh, also we are already trying to working on the on the next logo of Evolstar. This was and applying to, to that that the same logo of Evolstar to see what the result it produces, and uh, moving on to some conclusions uh, before. Uh, showing uh, the site. I hope I can also show it in the end. But well, this was a step forward in automatic image enhancement. We um, we evolved uh, some solutions that maximized uh, a lot of uh, the image quality assessment tools. Um, we also concluded that solutions uh, the solutions that turn a, a photograph into a, a a, a painting like we, we saw on those non photorealistic renderings um, tend to be preferred by most of these metrics. And um, well, basically turning and appealing images also uh, try to, uh, with this with this effect, also turn to into something different. And uh, uh, we concluded that this approach has more, has more value than uh, solving the problem itself, but also for this exploration of artistic effects. Of, of course, we also owe to the, the vulnerabilities and exploits of the approach uh, that are using the metrics that are being used, and that's not a new topic. Uh, and we, we, we feel that in the future work, we will try to make some mechanisms that do not allow for altering too much the, the images. Um, so, for future work, we, expand, we we intend to expand the function sets, incorporate more uh, machine learning approach, and try another strategies to combat some of the, the, the issues and problems that occur. You can find more details on um, on, on these websites, on the computational design visualization websites, Evo Imaging. And well, thank you all for the attention. Oops. Uh, yeah. I don't know if, if I can. Wait, wait, Sorry, I'm... I think I break down the, along the way. Hello? No, no, that was fine. There was just one slide yeah. where some of the images didn't show, but that, that was generally fine. So, okay, uh, yeah. Thank you. So, so, so we've got time for a, a, a quick, uh, quick question. If anyone's got a, has anyone got a, a question or comments? If not, we can move on to the final talk. Okay. Anyone putting their hand up or anything? Well, I can Can't just see. show how can we turn. Yeah, uh, sure. yeah. You can. You, I'm, I'm still sharing, right? Well, yeah, I can. Yeah, I can show it. also uh, how can right. we turn a, a, a bad picture uh, into a uh, well into a good one. So I have selected. A picture, yeah, of uh, uh, sorry, this is a bit. I think Zoom is lagging out my PC, but we have this picture of a barrel. Uh huh. Okay, yeah. so not very uh, appealing, I, I suppose, and if we try to submit it here to the system and try to apply one of these filters. We can, well, at least oh. give it another flair, another type of artistic swing to it. Yeah. <laughs> but this was just to, to show to show the system at work. Uh, Excellent. All right, thank you very much.